Morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this Wednesday morning. We're all losing track of days, but we're happy to have you here once again. And we have had a lot of training over the last couple of weeks, and we have a different type of presenter this morning, sort of talking about some of the nuts and bolts that we are going through right now. This morning, we have Tim Hudak, the CEO of the Ontario Real Estate Association. He's been in public service for 21 years, and prior to Oria, he was five years as the leader of the Progressive Conservative Party of Ontario. His focus is on transforming Oria for realtors and doing high, high impact advocacy for realtors, consumers, and providing quality service to all its members. So, Tim, welcome this morning. Thank you so much for making time for us. Let me turn the floor over to you. You have the platform to speak to our agents and agents across Canada. Well, super, Lee. Thanks for the uh, introduction. Really appreciate you having me on. Is, is Be Relentless a reference to, to me? Or is that I'm just kind of honing in on that? You know, it's one of our house habits or one of the things that we like to say in general. We like to be relentless in the industry in the most positive way possible. So this is our Be Relentless series. We don't want people sitting back, getting bored, thinking, what do I do because I can't leave the house? So we want to provide them with a community to come to each and every day so they can learn a little bit more about the industry and really do some business planning so when things finally get back up and running they feel like they're well prepared i get it. i get it because i mean you get down right i mean we're entering third week now of uh, corona bill i know we have uh, century 21 agents from across canada i'm super pleased to be here really honored uh, lee thanks for the invitation um but you know it gets you down right when you're working from home realtors by nature just they're very people-centric individuals you're always on the go i'm a bit like that for my current politics but you kind of get down being locked in at home so every time I got an email from you, Leah, that said, be relentless, Tim Budak, it got, got me going every day. Um, before I start, let me say uh, to, uh, to Brian uh, Rushton and uh, Ty Chayak and Gary Zlepa, who I've known uh, forever out of the Niagara Peninsula. He used to lobby me when I was in politics as a, as a leader, and he still is a great source of advice uh, for me. Um, enjoyed working with Century 21 and your leadership. So when Gary first reached out, he said, Tim, you want to be on the show? I said, for sure. You guys have been awesome. A lot of respect for the brand and your agents. And between uh, you and me, Lee, and the thousand plus people on Facebook Live today, can I tell you a little secret? My dad was at one time a Century 21 agent. Oh, really? That's so exciting. You so you've got some connection to the brand. <laughs> exactly. So he worked out at Fort Erie, Eugene Pilato, uh, the broker out of Fort Erie. Great guy, too. Also a big help to me over the years and a real community leader, as Century 21 brokers are. My dad worked for, for Eugene out of, uh, out of Fort Erie in the Niagara Peninsula, Ontario. Um, so look, what I thought I'd do today is talk a bit about what we're doing here at the Ontario Real Estate Association. We're the provincial body for realtors in Canada's largest province, obviously. About 80,000 members is the pace we're on to by the end of the year. It's a real a pleasure to uh, serve them as the CEO. So I want to talk a bit about uh, how we have our realtors back during this COVID crisis. Of course, we try to do that every day. But at a time like this where things are happening fast, information is scarce, none of us have been through this before, we want to be there for our members who are working hard every day for average hardworking Ontarians. And hopefully this will be of use for some folks right across Canada. And then, Lee, if timing is good, I'm more than happy to take any questions that folks watching may have. Does that sound cool? It sure does. I'll be here. So if people have questions, just write them in the comment section on Facebook and I'll be collecting them and then we'll chat when you're done. Fantastic. And as you noted, as a uh, recovering politician, uh, when I say I'll make brief remarks, it'll be about 45 to 50 minutes. Not really. <laughs> just kidding. All right. Well, I got a bit of a PowerPoint, so I'm going to pull it up here and I'm going to walk through uh, those that are attending this just in terms of what we are doing at ARIA. And I said, send in your questions and Lee will work through those. And if you have any suggestions for me, like I said, we're new to this too, like we all are. So there's a piece that we can do as a provincial association to help ease your pain, to help give you more information, to help advocate for you today and for a better tomorrow. I'm all ears. I'd love to hear about it. All right. Why don't I begin? I'm going to pull up my presentation here. Excuse me for a quick second. All right, so right out of the uh, gate, we talked about what realtors need to know in the COVID-19 crisis. Later uh, in this uh, slide deck, 
I'm going to give, because Century 21 folks are near and dear to my heart, I'm going to give you a preview of a website that will be launching either tonight or tomorrow morning where all of this information will be captured for the benefit of realtors. Of course, our target is realtors in the province of Ontario, their clients, but for sure anybody across Canada is more than free to see it as well. So we wanted to make sure that our top priority out of the gate was the health and safety of our members. That was our top priority. As soon as COVID-19 crisis hit and spread across Canada, uh, we did releases for all of our members, the 80,000 in Ontario, about how to keep themselves safe, how to keep their families safe, how to keep their clients safe, making sure we looked out for the well-being of our members, the people they serve, and Ontarians in general has been our number one priority throughout this crisis, and I know it is for you as well. One of the things we had to do, I want to make sure the screen's working okay there, Lee. You've got a picture of somebody putting some lotion on their hands, right? Perfect. That um, out of the gate, we said, look, if you can postpone something till after the crisis, do so. Urgent business only. Minimize contact face-to-face -face with other human beings. I know Century 21 sent similar messages right away to their agents, but we still had an issue despite the fact that we had said open houses, have them after we're done. We still had some popping up. And I want to commend brands like Century 21, many of the major companies or brokers out there, they had already started shutting these things down because of the risks of exposure as the crisis developed. But unfortunately, we still saw them popping up. So we got stronger and more direct in our message to those that weren't playing by the rule book, that weren't sensitive to what was happening in the crisis. And we said, folks, shut them down. Get your heads on straight. You got to look out for the public interest ahead of business. And as a result, we did that and we saw other bodies, including our local member boards, suppress open houses on their MLS. We saw Korea and we saw Rico, the regulator in Ontario, come up with some very strong language after we led the way. And our president, Sean Morrison, did an excellent job. And I'm, I'm proud that we were crystal clear on what's most important, and that's public safety and that of our agents. And as a result, open houses were then shutting down across the province of Ontario and we're in a much better spot through the crisis. We also push back on non-essential services. Look, if you have to do business because there's an emergency uh, in the system, an urgent need, then be smart about it. I know Century 21 gives good advice to its agents, but don't put any risk. Take non-essential business off the table and adopt the highest level of safety measures. We did this because it was the right thing to do. We did this because realtors are professionals and they look out for their communities and are actively involved. We did this because most realtors were increasingly worried about the small number that were maybe playing in the gray areas or outside of the rules. But we did this out of concern that if this broke into the media, this would be a very negative impact on the reputation of realtors, the profession, their faith in the services you provide or your daily commitment to your clients and their financial well-being as well as their health. So we acted strong, bold language, crystal clear, and now we have shut down those open houses in Ontario and moved to a much better position. Okay, so that was the opening chapter in the story. I know there's going to be many more to be written, but here's what happened next. We did say when the province of Ontario was looking at its uh, emergency orders to declare the state of emergency and move to essential business, and we said, okay, we've seen this story uh, in other states. It hadn't happened in Canada yet, but a number of states went to the shelter at home orders like California, New York, and others. And in many of those states, including the state of Washington, real estate was not an essential service. In some others like Ohio, Florida, Indiana, they were deemed an essential service. We said, okay, what do we want to do? So we went directly to Premier Ford, the ministers in the Ontario cabinet, and said, real estate should be an essential service for emergency situations, such as, let's say somebody has already made an offer for purchase of a home, and if they can't sell their own home, they're going to lose that deal. They'll lose their down payment. They'll lose their financing. Maybe somebody who had died, a family breaking up, a job offer, vacant homes. There will be exceptions if we exercise our professional development where real estate should continue and you should leave the land registry office open. Likewise, realtors will use non-direct contact in terms of virtual showings, using electronic signatures, all the tools available. We said that we would make our best efforts as an association to ensure our members had those tools at hand to practice proper social distancing and do remote deals everywhere possible. So we did press for essential service, but not business as usual, only for those types of urgent situations. 
And for those listening across the province of Ontario, if we screw it up, if we start doing business as usual, we take advantage of this, Premier Ford and his cabinet can, like that, take it all away. And then all those clients, those vulnerable individuals who need to make a transaction during this time because of their family situation, they're going to lose out. So play by the rules. Play ball and be the professionals we know you are. It is not business as usual. I will say, Lee, I know that in Quebec, real estate was not deemed an essential service, so effectively closing down transactions in that province. I'm not sure where the other provinces have landed yet, but they're probably all heading in a similar direction. If we want this to be successful in other provinces, it's important for Ontario to lead the way. As part of that campaign, we sent out very clear communications to our members. I know each of you is probably being inundated with emails and advice and questions on every aspect of your business. Can you leave your home during the day? How do you practice or just hang it all up and wait? So we had clear messaging like this, stop doing open houses, stop doing in-person showings, stop showings of tenanted properties while this crisis is on. What can you do? Stay home and save lives. Virtual showings, online tools to close deals, communicating by telephone, every method available, but avoid that face-to-face -face contact. Put your health, put your safety first, that of your clients and the people of this great country of Canada. Some other general advice that we sent out, all common sense, but it does help when we put it in this crystal clear, easy to capture language with one quick glance. We'll continue doing that. Our president, Sean Morrison, did say, I think in great language here, why are you gonna put your health on the line? Why will you put the health of your client who trusts you implicitly? or the community that you love and you serve each and every day. Why would you put any of that on the line for showings that you can put off till tomorrow or do virtually? It is simply not worth the risk. Okay, so those are the first two chapters, health and safety first and foremost, the essential services, but only for those transactions that were absolutely emergencies or urgent matters to follow what it means to be an essential service and not business as usual. Urgent matters, let's not mess this up. The government has trusted us to act like professionals, so do so. What else is the Ontario Real Estate Association doing for you? Advocacy is a big part of our job, being your voice in interaction with government officials. So we're working with all the levels of government. Sorry, I'm looking around here, realizing that it's a little warm in my home office here in the front window. Excuse me for a second. Number one. Governments are almost every day rolling out programs to help benefit those who cannot make a living during this crisis. We are all impacted in various ways, let alone the stress levels each and every one of you is feeling today. Real estate is a different business from most. There will be a lag between the time that revenue losses start coming into our brokerages. There are deals in the system that are closing. The impact, the worst of it, sadly, is yet to be felt. So when government says those that lost business during the crisis will be supported, like brokerages, well, there's going to be a lag in the system. How do we make sure our brokerages benefit from those overall programs? You as realtors are all independent contractors. You don't pay EI. You don't get vacation pay. You don't get sick pay like most people. So when governments have benefit programs to support you, we want to make darn sure that realtors get covered, that they have fair treatment under these programs. It's a big part of our job. On a day-to-day -day basis, we're doing a lot of crisis management as well. Let me give you an example of something that we worked on just yesterday and today. A big issue happening in Ontario, and I'm sure other provinces, uh, has to do with tenanted properties. So what happens if a tenant has given notice that they're moving out and a landlord wants to get somebody else in? What if they want to sell that place? What if they're in financial difficult circumstances and need to make a transaction? What happens in those types of cases with landlords, particularly mom and, and pop, small landlords, when people aren't paying rent. As you may have heard in Ontario, maybe it's in other provinces as well, the Premier said, if you've got money, pay the rent. If you get close, make a deal with your landlord. But if you can't because you're out of work, don't pay the rent. Pay the food first. I get it. I think that's solid advice. You pay, pay if you can't. But the problem is that many landlords, especially small mom and pops, are going to be left in the lurch. So we went to work to make sure well, we haven't won the battle yet, but the government is at least talking to us that if landlords are out, that they're not going to pay the bills and they might risk losing those properties and taking properties out of real estate altogether, the government should support those landlords. You tell people they can, not, they can not pay rent, they can defer rent, and you know it's going to take time for them to make up the money to pay the rent. you got to give landlords a lifeline in the meantime. 
We also ensured that our local member boards who can't do their own meetings virtually because of their bylaws are, late, are given more time to hold their annual general meetings or they can change their bylaws to allow for electronic meetings. So a number of these things are working on day to day. Uh, and I mentioned the open houses earlier on. So number one, making sure realtors and brokers will benefit from the overall government programs given the unique nature of business. Number two, day-to-day -day emergency issues to advocate for our members and who they represent. And then the third category, we want to see real estate help lead the economic recovery and the confidence recovery that is necessary after this unprecedented crisis. We know that can happen. Back when we had the last slowdown in 2008, 2009, while real estate was hurting, it was actually real estate that helped to keep our head above water. And Ontario was hemorrhaging manufacturing jobs, for example. It was real estate and construction that kept our heads slightly above water. So we're making the case to the premier, and I know at a national level, Korea will do the same, that real estate can help to lead that economic recovery and the recovery and confidence for all Canadians. One idea, what if they suspended the land transfer tax, both across the province of Ontario and the extra land transfer tax in Toronto had a holiday to help spark the real estate sector. And you know when that happens, impact on moving, furniture, making household repairs, it's a great way to kickstart the economy. Happy to talk more about some of the ideas we're working on for when we are through. Okay, here's what's coming up very soon. If you can cut and paste or photograph the screen, we're at COVID19info.com. It's going to be a microsite. There's going to be a microsite for all the information that we have on COVID and your business. FAQs you may have as an operator, resources to benefit realtors, the types of services that we may have, and making sure you get access to government programs. Look for this launch, areacovid19info.com. We also are hosting webinars on tools that may help you in your business. We'll post all of those if you cannot attend live on that screen as well. And then we're having a webinar as well tomorrow on changes to our standard forms, additional clauses. Think of this as a COVID-19 package. State of emergency, if you're unable to complete a deal, how can you get an extension? The uh, use of key drop devices, electronic signatures, all of that. We'll also put on our site but a live webinar will be happening, hosted by Aria tomorrow on this package of standard forms, clauses, and other support documents for transactions that happened during this crisis. There's some information on those webinars when they're taking place. Feel free to sign up. And as you can see in the bottom of the screen, the website there, please do capture that. Please do attend. We'd love to get your input. We're going to be doing at least two of these and more to come depending on how long this crisis does last. And Lee, in conclusion, let's just stay connected. Here's some information from uh, Aria as well. We do a podcast as well with our president. I want to invite those in Ontario to join our research panel. We, we have about 2,500 realtors who are the sort of the voice of the grassroots. We go to them at least on a monthly basis with questions on issues we're working on, what to lobby government on, what's the temperature of your local market. Love to have more Century 21 agents on that. So you can see on our screen, joinarearesearch.com. Love to have you as part of that. We'll be doing those types of temperature checks during this crisis as well. Services we provide and standard for webinars I mentioned earlier on, please do sign up. So, Lee, with that, I will pause my presentation to say to our members, we have your back. Here are my So, thank you for your attention to that. Thanks for your attention on the webinar today. And if you have any questions coming in, Lee, I'm more than happy to take them. very much. I'm just trying to unmute myself. All right. We did have a couple of questions coming in. Is Ori doing anything to lobby the government to extend and include further business or companies and agents? You mean the essential services category? Is that what that means? Yes, I believe so. So if, I, if the individual who sent that, you know, can send if I'm misunderstanding. So let me say how I understand that question because I was working on it today. So the government in Ontario uh, had about, boy, I think about 70 exemptions for essential services, meaning every, every bit of work has to shut down, set down workplaces, unless you're an essential service. I spoke earlier about how we insured real estate was there as an essential service, not business as usual, 
but for emergency circumstances. So there's some things that were left off the bid, off that list that are important to put for this people real quick. It's on the list. Photographers may be as well. And again, we encourage no human interaction for the time being. Do that remotely or one individual like in a vacant place at a time. Home stagers may be another one. So we do have a legal opinion from the home inspectors that they are covered because the Emergency Services Act does say in support of real estate services. So as for a transaction, our read so far as those businesses can support the work of a realtor, they just could not do it on their own. A photographer, for example, couldn't do wedding photos. I don't think anybody's having a wedding in these circumstances, but there is an example, as long as it's in support of real estate services. Answer the question a bit more directly. We're not looking to have them added on to the list. I think that's going to be really hard to do. But by definition, if we're supporting the exchange of real estate, then our reads so far as they're covered, and we're going to make sure we're in contact with government to make sure we're interpreting that correctly. So hopefully that answers the question. It does, but I also got it a little bit wrong. Um, what about for programs for keeping employees on? Have you given any thought about what that's going to look like two to three months down the road when things could slow down and, you know, the revenues aren't coming in quite as much for both companies and for agents? Yeah, 100%. We're already on that because, well, you know, for example, a restaurant uh, is feeling the crunch right now because they're closed. They can only do takeout or delivery in, in Ontario. So right now they can say, okay, our revenue is down this much and they can apply for that program and then get the 75% wage uh, cap up to keep people on payroll. Look, I, I think that the prime minister, uh, Justin Trudeau is on the right track uh, on this. It's much better to keep people on payroll. First, it's important for your pride, you're still working, even if you're not part of a, part of a company, or part of a team. But also from a practical point of view, if somebody then has to go and apply, they get laid off, they got to apply for EI. There's going to be a significant lag before that money starts flowing. They got to go through the paperwork. And it's a pride thing too, right? You don't want to go on EI unless you absolutely have to. So it's much better to subsidize wages to keep people on payroll. So good for them. And it's better they moved it from 10%, which is way too low, higher to 75. Our job is to make sure that window stays open because brokerages are not going to feel the same impact like a restaurant till later on. So we're on that. We don't have an answer from government yet. Governments are moving with super speed in this crisis compared to usual, but that level of detail for an exceptional place like real estate, we've got more, more work to do. We're on it. I'm feeling good about it, but that is not finalized yet, and we'll work with our national partners, Korea, to make sure that national program will include brokerages. The next question, I don't know how much you can answer, but have you seen any deals not closing because mortgage companies pull funding when the buyer is laid off last minute? So I don't know. Um, obviously concerned about that. Not one has been brought to my attention yet, but this looks like one of those issues that can move very quickly. And I know some of the major financiers uh, have had initiatives to help people uh, delay mortgages. We need to look into that a bit more um, in partnership with Korea. That'd be a national issue uh, when somebody gets laid off when they're close to the end of the deal. So I'll have to knock that one down for memory to do a bit more work on and see if Korea has had some advancements in their work. At it. You know, how often is Ori in touch with the government in part of these discussions in order to have some of these conversations about kickstarting the economy and the things being offered to agents and to uh, to brokerages all the time it's it's a daily it's a daily thing look I um, spent 21 years uh, at uh, at Queen's Park as you're so kind to say as an elected representative leader of the Conservative Party here in Ontario um, I like to joke around that 21 years is a longer sentence than they give you for manslaughter in Ontario but I did my public service um, it helped a lot and a very strong uh, and veteran uh, government relations team so we're in there not physically but we're in there each and every day. Just yesterday, I was interacting with the Municipal Affairs uh, Minister around support from mom-and-pop landlords. The day before that was the Consumer and Government Services Minister around things like what's an essential service and the Corporations Act so our local boards can still have meetings and that may impact Century 21 uh, as well. So it is many times a day. It's a pretty crazy environment, unlike anything that I've seen. But I think because so I'm confident Number one, that we know our way around. And number two, we've established very strong, supportive 
and trusted relationships with government, with the New Democrats and the official opposition and the other two parties, Liberal and Green, that they do trust us, they do come to us for advice. And I can tell you that's enabled us to put real estate issues on their priority list. It's why we got essential services. And I will say too, I was interacting with the New Democrats yesterday, one of their uh, leading MPPs on their idea to support renters and landlords through this crisis. None of us want to see a single person lose their home. We don't see anybody out in the streets during a pandemic. They have some very good ideas as well on how to make sure people can have security in their shelter. We do have one from a group that there's a lot of hostility between agents. The divide is getting worse. Do you think Rico or Oria would ever step in to warn agents not to speak negatively about one another? Well, they shouldn't. <laughs> it doesn't help you or your reputation individually, nor does it reflect well on the profession. I take that that might be a concern from some agents that others are not following the public health guidelines. I take that uh, for what it is. Um, I think direct interaction to call out friends and colleagues helps. I think brokerages do a good job. I know Century 21 is a brand of, of high degree of integrity. They look out for their agents and their clients. So I think hearing from somebody up the line can help bring a realtor who's not following the rules or following our advice into line. Ultimately, when our president, Sean Morrison, took a very strong stand and said, stop the open houses, stop the in-person, look out for the community and not yourselves, that caused that small number that were in line to start coming back. I suspect there's still who didn't listen. But what it also provoked was the Real Estate Council of Ontario, RICO, started getting tougher. They sent out a pretty strong bulletin echoing the same messages that we're putting out there. But they said in there, they put a big red circle around it, that realtors who are outside of these rules will face disciplinary proceedings. So they'll face the wrath of the regulators, so to speak, if they're abusing the public trust. So if there are those still out there, they should be very, very worried about that. And RICO complaints, I mean, RICO is not going to sit idly aside. I'm quite confident that people are putting health and safety of Canadians at risk. Another question from one of our agents. Is the CERB available for real estate agents? My understanding is yes, that real estate agents are going to qualify for that uh, support program as uh, independent contractors. We are still looking, working with, again, that's, that's at the national level. So Korea, Community Real Estate Association is the lead. We're supporting those efforts. But the last we heard is that looks like it is going to be the case. We're sort of crossing the T's and dotting the I's. When that is 100% certain, it will be on our website that I put up there earlier on. We want to make sure that as independent contractors, realtors do not lose out on a government benefit because of the unique nature of the job. So it's looking really good. I think it's 90 some percent there but we have the official word, you'll see it on our website. Great information. Another question on that note, any financial breaks for dues and fees that you are aware of from a provincial level, from Oria, Korea? I think it's still early. I don't know if Korea, Korea I think initially uh, put out that they weren't going to be touching uh, on the, uh, the dues side. A number of local boards, uh, in uh, Ontario have decided to give a break of some kind, defer collection, reduce the next quarter. Other boards have said, no, they can't do that. Their suppliers are not reducing their costs and they're going to be investing in services. And uh, at ARIA, our board has, I guess, looking at what the local boards are doing, there's been no decision from the province of Ontario yet, the provincial association. They'll put in the balance, let's say if we reduce dues for several months, about $20 to $30 back. The reduce for all we give you are only $110. So our board will weigh whether $20 or $30 can make a big difference or if we can invest in more services for our members during this time of crisis. So they'll be deciding whether it's a dues reduction or there may be services around you know, mental health counseling, financial advice, the advice that we're already doing, doubling our lobbying efforts to make sure realtors are covering these programs. There will be trade-offs. Our board will wade in into exactly where that balance is going to be soon. From license renewals this year, any changes on courses, anything that you can make people aware of now, or is like you just said, is it still too early for some of this stuff? Yeah, so anybody going through the articling, uh, we talked to Rico, and Rico's doing the right thing, saying nobody's going to lose their license as a result of these delays. They'll reset the timetable when the crisis is over. 
So if you're worried about that, don't worry. Rico has already said nobody is going to lose their license or the path that they're on. Uh, similarly, RE is delivering the, the brokerage uh, courses. If you're online, you continue your studies. The testing has been held up because the testing was always in person for the RIA college. And students who are doing the pre-licensing, similarly, can continue online learning. They can't be tested yet. We can't postpone any in-class teaching and in-class exams. We are, however, working with colleges and universities and RICO, uh, as well as um, service delivery systems for online testing to say, okay, we always did in person in the past. We did that because we wanted to make sure that the individual who qualified, they got licensed was a real individual. But do we really have to do it that way? So right now we're looking at a number of options with RICO, extending the deadline to graduate, uh, online learning, a big surge if this thing ends sooner rather than later. But we want to make sure any of the students in the system are not going to be jeopardized in any way. They can still pass their courses, become licensed, and those looking for finishing their articling are not going to have their licensing jeopardized either. Excellent. Thank you very much. We know we've thrown a lot at you in the last couple of minutes, so we appreciate you just taking all those and giving the information that you have. We really appreciate it. Great presentation. We can always drive people to the Oreo website if they have further questions. But Tim, thank you very much for joining us today. We really, really appreciate it. Hey, Lee, appreciate the opportunity. If I wasn't relentless, hopefully I got somewhere close. And if folks mm -hmm. watching have any follow-up questions for me, I had put on my contacts earlier on and do stay tuned for that website that will be your one-stop source uh, here in the province of Ontario and hopefully in Canada for what you need to succeed and survive and stay healthy during COVID. Thank you very much. We wish you the same. Thank you very much. For everyone who is online today, thank you for joining us. Tomorrow, Thursday, we will be joined by Kathleen Black, and she's talking about how to keep your mindset strong during this time. I know our presenter, Chris Leader, yesterday talked a lot about how you may have started to take a little bit of a step back because it's been going on for a couple of weeks now. You've been working from home and that it's important to stay fresh. So Kathleen will continue that discussion for us tomorrow. We hope you'll be able to join us at the same time, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. We will see you tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.